Hallelujah. He rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. Yes, he did the Christ. Sing it. He rose from the grave. Mm. He rose from the grave. Our Lord and Savior, he did it. He rose from the dead. The man God, the Emmanuel, the Messiah, the anointed one of Israel. And I'm back. It's been quiet because I've been studying. He is the Lord and this is resurrection week. He was put on the cross by his own will. He told them, no man can kill me, but I initiate the sacrifice. Today, this is called Resurrection Sampler, God Style. This is called Resurrection Sampler, God's Style. Father, we just bless you. And we thank you for this word. We ask you to forgive us our sins. Oh, you died and rose again that we could die and rise again. Holy Spirit, illuminate this word. I must decrease so that you must increase in Jesus' name. Amen. This is called the Resurrection Sampler. Oh, my Lord, this is so beautiful because he died. He died for us. We nailed him on the cross. All humanity, all of us, because of our sins. That's why they said, there goes the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The Lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. So that we, that, so that we could have a life and life in abundance. Resurrection sampler taken from. Proverbs chapter 6. We want to talk about what God, what the Lord hates so that we could hate it, so that we could catapult into resurrection power. We want to become new in him. We want to flow in newness and we want to flow in his revelation. So Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. Listen to this. These things, these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that, that, that devises wicked plans. Feet that are swift and running the evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. Today we want to talk about these things that the Lord hates. Said he hates, or that word abomination, to dis distaste, or extreme hatred. It's offensive or corrupt. Levi or Le Leviticus 18.22 talks about abomination when it talks about a man in, in, in a man in Leviticus 18.22 
that's an example, but he talks about what he hates. And he probably hates this because it hurts us. And anything that hurts us, it's not in God's will. But if it's to fix us, it could be establishing God's will. His, his will is mystery. His will is mysterious. And his will is for us. I want to start with the proud look. He does not like or it's an abomination to him, a proud look. This proud look is actually an attitude that looks down on others. They, they, they think that they're better than others and they look down on others in this particular manner. And, and God says it's a pride or a haughty. It's, a, it's a, an attitude that is an expression of pride. God says to remove this. He says, I need you to find the agape expression. The fruits of the spirit, love, patience, peace, kindness, gentleness, long suffering, apathy, self-control. Uh-huh. That agape, it connects to us. And then when it when it connects, it's such a solvent like honey. It just it sticks. Love sticks to everything. Hate runs people off. God says a pride, a proud look. We need to look at it at, with a magnifying lens and then we need to remove it. Pride comes before a fall. And two, he says, a lying tongue, a lying tongue. Can we go to John 8? Can we go to John 8? I'm going to be flipping around. John 8, 44. Amen. How you guys doing? I'm going in here. 844 and here it is a lying tongue humanity we lie to keep it covered I'm going to say it again he hates a lying tongue but we like to lie to keep things covered but listen to 844 I'm going to go to 42 Jesus said to them if God were your father you would love me for I proceeded forth and came from God. The Father and Son are the same. We're talking about resurrection today. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my words. 44, we're talking about he hates a liar. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. If you want to know who who is of the truth and who is of God? He was of a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth be, because there is no truth in him. There's no truth in the devil. When he speaks a lie, he speaks it from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it all. The devil is the father of lies. Humanity, we lie to keep things covered so that we can have an advantage God is, wants us to pray about when we think about telling that lie, that white lie. God's going to help us when we, when we systematically think about it. He's going to move it out and say, just go ahead on and tell the truth and deal with all that. He hates or it's an abomination. Remember this extreme hatred. Hands that, that shed innocent blood. Hands that shed innocent blood. We want to talk about Remember Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel, remember? Hands is shed innocent blood. The key word is the hands. What do your hands do and what does your heart do? Cain and Abel gave God a sacrifice. One gave him his best and the other held back. And then it says that they both, it was time for them to receive their blessing. And one received what he gave. Abel and Cain received it too, a curse. And he killed his brother. Abel was innocent. Are you innocent today? 
let's work on being innocent. God says, God says, don't shed innocent blood because that blood will be back on you. He wants us to maintain our innocent by being in the kingdom. We're talking about what's an abomination so we can be reconciled and resurrected. We're going to be resurrected before I end this today. And he says, hands that shed innocent blood, Cain and Abel, they were brothers. Sometimes God will show you who's who in the nick of time. But in that situation, Abel didn't have enough time, but it is for our, it is for our memory and it's for an historical proof that jealousy and envy sometimes will kill you for a heart that devises wicked plans, a heart that devises wicked plans. Can we, we see we had hands. What, what are your hands doing? God says, what are your hands? Are they, are they blessing or are they shedding innocent blood? And what is your heart doing? Let's go to Ezekiel 36. Can we go to Ezekiel 36? Can we? I'm going to try to find it here. Ezekiel 36. We had, we had the, the hands, the hands need to bless. And then the heart needs to bless too. So we see here the hands that shed innocent blood. God wants to remove that. And then the heart that devises wicked plans. The Old Testament says that the heart is desperately wicked. Who could ever know it? God is sharing with us at any moment, if we're not in the right setting with God in the kingdom, our systems could be off. But I want to show you Ezekiel 36, Ezekiel 36, verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 36, 26 to 27. The heart de devises wicked plans. You know why it devises wicked plans? Because it's connected to the father of lies. We just saw it. We saw it in John 8, 44. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you. Listen to this and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. I'm going to read this again. I'm going to go to 25. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you. This is how we're getting resurrected. I told you. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. See, we were once filthy with idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, a new heart and a new spirit. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. That's why Cain killed him. He used his hands instead of blessing but for a curse, but a heart devises wicked plans. But God is going to give us a new heart. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you. He's actually doing that surgery and cause you to walk, walk in my statues. That means it lasts for eternity, a long time. To walk in my statues, that means you're applying pressure to what he's given you and you will keep, when you walk, you will keep my judgments and do them. He says, do them. And then he hates what an abomination is the feet that are swift to run to evil. Feet that are swift to run to evil. Lot's wife. There's abomination for feet that are swift to run. First of all, your feet. We talked about the heart, 
the the heart, uh huh. The hands, the heart, and the feet. The hands should be a blessing. The heart should be connected to God. He's going to give you a new heart, and then your feet. That's why we need the full gospel. That's why we need the mind of Christ. That's why we have to put on the full armor. The feet. The feet needs to be shod, shod in that gospel, that gospel of peace. It's peace and righteousness. Feet that are are swift to run to evil. Lot's wife had everything. She had a husband, a family, and everything. God says He's gonna destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because there wasn't even ten people in there righteous. But He tells them to go to the hills. They start to go, and then she. Thinks when you think, she thought to herself, "Oh, what am I gonna miss?" Lot didn't know what everything she was doing. My point is this: she turned back. Her feet that are swift to run the evil. Genesis nineteen twenty six. Read the story. I don't have time. Lot's wife looked back for a momentary second. It was enough to. Lose her position in Christ, the Messiah, and it says that she turned into a pillar because she lost her position. She looked back. We don't have time to look back because he said it was an abomination. This is why she wanted the world more than she wanted the Christ. That's that's simple as that. Lot and Abraham and them won. They went to the hills and they were saved. Go to the hills and where your help comes from. She lost her help because she wasn't covered in the manifold protection, and she froze. She turned into a pillar. She was gone. Six, a false witness. Matthew twenty-three. Can we go there? Can I help someone today? Matthew twenty-three. A false witness that spreads lies. Matthew twenty-three. Matthew twenty-three. I'm almost done, and then I'm going to pray us out with a Shabbat. And we're going to get healed, and we're going to be resurrected. He hates this. An abomination is extreme hatred. It's offensive. It's corrupt. It's distaste. An abomination. He hates it because it's against his laws. It's against his love. It's against his mandates. And God says, if you want resurrected power today, you have to remove some things, and it's around seven of them. A false witness is one. We read five already. A false witness who spreads lies. Matthew twenty three twenty seven twenty three twenty seven. And listen to this. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees! These are the religious leaders. This is Jesus. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees! You hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside. This is the religious leaders of Jesus' day. Of over two thousand years ago, but there's some like this. I'm not. I'm not judging anybody. This is the word of God. But inside are full of dead men's bones. This is Matthew twenty-three twenty-seven. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside you are full of dead man's bones and are, are uncleanliness. Even so, you are outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of prophets and adore the monuments of the righteous and say, if we had lived in these days of our father, we not have partaken with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore, you are witnesses against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets, fill up then the measure of your father's guilt. Serpents, broad of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? These are the religious leaders Jesus is talking about. Therefore, indeed, I send you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in the synagogue. He's prophesying about the apostles and persecute from city to city. Number six of false witnesses that spread lies. That on you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of righteous of Abel, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Bersheila, whom you murder between the temple and the altar. Surely I say to you, all these things will come upon your generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, 
the one who kills the prophets and the stones, those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as hens gather her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, blessed he is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. There's an abomination to spread lies, false witness. And then the last one, one who sows discourse among the brethren. Mark 7. We got to go to Mark 7 and I'm almost done. The, here goes Mark 7. Mark 7 verse 5. Mark 7 verse 5. And we're talking about the seven things that the Lord hates. And the last one is, it's one. It is a person who sows discord or gossips among the brethren. The accuser of the brethren is in Revelation chapter 12. But we overcame them by, by the word of our testimony. And we did not love our life unto death, but we overcame them. The accuser of the brethren, you know how we did it? By the word of this testimony, by the word. Mark 7, 5 through 23. And then I'm going to close. This, the name of this today is the Resurrection Sampler, God Style. This is called the Resurrection Sampler, God Style. And listen to Mark 7, verse 5 through 23. And number seven is who, one who sows discourse among brethren. He hates this. And here we go. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do you, why do your disciples not walk according to the traditions of the elders? See, we're not in religion anymore and we never have been. That's why we're ostracized because the kingdom of God is not just eating or drinking, but it is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. It is the kingdom of God. So I want, why do you disciples, listen to this, why do your disciples not walk according to the traditions? See, we don't walk according to the traditions, but we walk according to God's power and his full gospel. And I'm speaking, why do you disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? Listen to this. There's seven things that he detests, but when we remove them, we get resurrected. He answered and said to them, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites at his written did These people honor me with their lips. God does not want this anymore. These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me and in vain. They worship me teaching as the doctrines, the commandments of men. We're not teaching the commandments of men. We're teaching the commandments of God for laying aside, for laying aside commandments of God. You hold tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. He said to them all too well, you reject the commandments of God that you may keep your traditions. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to read that again. He said to them, all too well, you reject or you set aside the commandments of God that you may keep your traditions. Today's edification resurrection service is called the resurrection sampler because we won't keep tra traditions of man, but we will only keep God's tradition. Today I'm speaking because the Lord spoke to me and says, do your resurrection service early, do it backwards. Expose to your people what I want and what I don't want. Let them concentrate on that and by the time Easter comes, a resurrection comes, they're gonna be so deep in me that everything in them going to be saturated. Today, this prophet is coming to you in the middle of the week, letting you know that we're about to enter in to a period of history 
that is so revelatory in him. I'm getting ready to give you the resurrection power. It is on you right now because when we concentrate on those seven things that he hates, he hates those things because they are not of the kingdom, but they're of the devil. And God is calling us to raise up holy hands right now. He wants us to find him. And when we find him, I'm going to show you a scripture and I'm going to pray us out. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And God told me we can prove it in Romans. In Romans chapter, in Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. There's nothing. He's getting ready to resurrect us right now before I close this right now. And when you concentrate on Proverbs chapter six, the seven things that he hates, and the last one is sowing discord. That is against his true nature because he's called us to a blessing. He's called us to love humanity, but it takes us to be in the spirit. It takes us to be in the Holy Ghost. There's nothing that can separate us. Let's look at this. Romans chapter 8, 25. Romans eight thirty-five. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sore as written for your sake we are killed all day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter 37 yet in all these things we are more than conquerors this is how we're getting resurrected when we believe this i don't care what condition you're in right now Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor death, nor any created thing, any created thing that man has made, that Satan has made, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Father God, it is in you that we live and have our being. Lord, resurrect us, wake us up from our slumber and our sleep. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I'm asking and declaring under the sound of my voice, Lord, to wake us up from our sleep. We were only sleeping, but we were dead. Father, baptize us afresh right now and wake us up. And as we wake up and open up our eyes, we look at a new cosmos with you in it. Lord, allow us, Lord, and we want to be in your free will, but in that will, Lord, we want to move and, and we want to apply the blood right now, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. You died and you, you poured out your blood. I hear the blood, the blood, the blood. It's in the blood. It's in the blood. The blood of Christ is pure. Father, dip the blood on us right now and, and crucify us. Raise us back from the dead right now. Father, when you raise us back up, we want to open up our eyes. We want to open up our eyes and we want to believe that we're in the kingdom and that everything that you said, everything that Christ Jesus said is true. You're the same yesterday, today and forevermore. Lord, we don't remember yesterday because yesterday is over. Father, crucify us. Crucify our flesh. Lord, we remember your name. It's highly exalted and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, we know you're going to handle us with care, not like man. As you handle us with care, Lord, we want to remember and we want to handle all those with care. Father, if we've hurt anybody, Lord, forgive us. If we remember we did it or we don't, Father. And Father, whoever listens to this message, I want them to remember that they're good enough. You said in your word that what you made is good. 
and is very healthy. Father, help them to see that they have composure enough to do your will, to help someone. When you help someone, you're helping yourself and then the Lord remembers your name. Father, we declare that the church without judgment will be a church without judgment, but we would love and identify that you came and you, you're you healing us. You're healing us, Father. You're healing us by the grace and by your mercy and by the word of God. By the word of God, I hear the word being resonating right now and it's it's being approved in your life read the word and study to show yourself approved to god and not man a workman that not be ashamed dividing the word of truth god says don't worry about man don't focus on man focus on him he's bringing you back into the jordan he's dipping you down deep He's dipping you and he's resurrecting you right now. Oh, ooh, Father, we bless you right now. I see the river, the river, the river, the rivers of the Jordan. Oh, not the Dead Sea. Oh, God, we bless you. Not the Dead Sea where nothing grows. The Sea of Galilee says you're going back, but you're not fishing. You're not fishing for men. Yes, you're fishing for souls, just like the apostles as you go. Yes, 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 to the Sea of Galilee where Jesus was. He says, when you go to the Sea of Galilee and take a Shabbat on your, by yourself, Jesus says, go to the Sea of Galilee. That's being in his presence and worship with him. Worship with him. When you find him, when you find the Christ, he will find you. And just like when the disciples could not find any more fish, Jesus went in. He went in and he went down deep and he brought out the best for them. And he'll bring out the best for you. Shabbat Shalom. With the spirit of the Lord, there's, there's liberty on this resurrection week. He says, remove the stone, take off the grave clothes because... Now is the season of the Lord, Shabbat Shalom, and we're winners in Christ Jesus. He is giving you the keys for wealth and prosperity from the church without judgment. Prophet Mark, we love you. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. I'm reporting to you that we're in the season of overflow and we love you. We're in the season of overflow. Oh, season of overflow. Oh, oh, season of overflow. Season of overflow. Love you. Be blessed.